Hey, let's stand up, let's worship together this morning. We want to start with something that is a little more familiar for everybody. Let's sing this out. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds I hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the down over there for just a minute. We had a plan. They had a plan. They had a plan. I'm interrupting the plan. I'm interrupting the plan. So uh, it is great to see you. I'm supposed to come up after the second song, but uh, it is too good to not, uh, y'all just got warmed up. That, that was practice, okay? 
So we don't get this privilege often. So uh, I want to I want to get them to go through that song one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and open us in prayer. But uh, honestly, take a deep breath, everybody. It's okay. You're you're at home. Okay. Uh, Together with us. And uh, so I want you to sing out. All right. And Rusty, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, He's (laughs) he was ready to go. So. uh, so we don't we don't question what he's got in that cup that he carries with him on Sunday morning. So anyhow, let, let's pray. Father, thank you so much, God, for your grace. I thank you for your um, your mercy toward us. And just a, just a little bit, God, just a few minutes, we'll be uh, sharing communion and um, talking about how your son was sent by you to die on uh, a cruel cross for our behalf. Um, so that if we put our faith in you, God, we would be rescued from eternal punishment, uh, separated from you forever and ever. And God, I, I just um, I thank you, Father, for, um, for that already. And I thank you, Father, that there is, as even in Romans 1, it tells us that without excuse we stand before you because the creation itself screams that there's a God and and when we look around God and see the brook and hear the birds and I'm afraid sometimes we get too busy to realize who you are and then to think that you're not sparing your son sent him to die and one day we we ought to if we are if we are born again people If there's anyone in this room that does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, there ought to be somebody in this room that would testify. If it be in song, in word, in acclamation, that you are who you say you are, and that this world pales in comparison to what you promised us. A world free from sin and suffering. So God, as we get ready to sing, let us sing like it's our last time to testify of you on this earth. In Christ's name, amen. Sing, O oh Lord, my God. Here we go. O oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Thank you. 
Wow. Well, good morning. You can be seated for just a, a few minutes. Y'all can't, but uh, but they can. Um, we're going to, uh, they're going to start passing out communion. And as they do, I just want to encourage you, if you feel comfortable taking communion with us today, um, you, you feel free to take one of these uh, packets as, you, as they come around. Uh, as they begin to pass them out, just want to say it is absolute blessing to be able to be with you uh, here this morning and uh, ju just to be together, especially to experience uh, the things that we're going to experience this morning uh, with, with baptism. Uh, we actually, uh, it's, it's been uh, kind of incredible to watch God actually put that together uh, in, 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 in so many ways over the, just the last couple weeks. Uh, it's been, been just uh, phenomenal to to watch, and I say just last couple of weeks, God's been working on it since before the foundation of the world. Um, but uh, to get the opportunity today to uh, to share the testimony of changed lives through the testimony of bat baptism is just absolutely phenomenal. But we wouldn't have that opportunity had it not been for Christ. And when we take communion, that is what we're doing: is we are testifying, even in this, and remembering what He has done for us. Um, and I, I'm uh, just just remind, reminded of so, in so many ways, if you could pass that there, uh, of how Jesus himself um, met with his disciples. And he actually um, instituted, he started this, this uh, re remembrance service of the death and burial, but also the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so I, I want to encourage you at the moment, if you want to, go ahead and break open the bread end of these little chalices um, there. And um, as we do, uh, I, a lot of times I'll read Scripture uh, like we would traditionally do it, but I want, to just, I want to just do it off the cuff today. And when Jesus sat down with his disciples, he took bread, the Bible says, and he broke it with them. And he said, "Is you know when they when they eat this supper, when they do this this, do it in remembrance of him. And when we break, uh, when the bread is broken, when we take of this bread, we're remembering the the body of the Lord Jesus Christ that has been broken on our behalf. You know, and I don't want to take anything away from the physical suffering of Jesus because that was a uh, a visual uh, testimony of the." Uh, punishment that God was going to pour out on us if we had not had any way to uh, get a reprieve, to get, a, um, to get our sins atoned for. We owe a debt, uh, and our, our debt that we owe is something that's so immeasurable that we can't pay. We don't even have the resources the, the, to facilitate that, that payment. In other words, he demands a sinless life to be given uh, for, for, to atone for the sins. And how can we do that when we're sinful ourselves? And so as we do this, we remember that Jesus Christ, when he died and, and let his body be beaten for us, be hung upon the cross and die there, he, he was the atoning sacrifice for us that we could never uh, achieve on our own. And, and I don't know about you, but every day that I study the scriptures, every day that I live in the grace of God, I'm more and more uh, re reminded and mindful of what Jesus did that I couldn't do. That's hard sometimes. I don't know how you ladies, I'm not, I'm not a lady, okay? Never will be one. I don't care what science does. I can, I can go up three octaves in, in voice, and I can do all kinds of other things, but at the end of the day, God makes men, and God makes women, boys and girls. That's a sermon enough right there, amen? Something the world needs to hear. But as a man, when I think about the fact that I can't do it, I can't achieve it, it's assaulting to my pride. And I'm sure to you ladies, it's, it, it is too, because it's like, you, you cannot do this. You know, y'all all, how many of y'all seen Nemo? You just can't do it, Nemo. You just can't do it. And that's what God's trying to tell us. You just can't do it. Try as hard as you want to. You do not want to stand before God having it weighed out, your good versus his good. You don't want it. What you want is the substitutionary atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want him to have paid the debt for you and your faith be placed in that payment. And so that's what we commemorate today. 
So as I pray uh, and we get ready to take of this, just be mindful of what he did for us in that. Father, as we take this, it's just a symbol. It, it, we don't believe that it literally turns into your body. But we do know this. As we take this symbolic uh, uh, piece of bread that, that is, is a picture to us or a remembering uh, stone to us, uh, of the of the body that you, uh, your son Jesus uh, was shed for us or, or, or was broken for us, given for us. As we do that, God, would you please take our gratitude, our thanks for what you did in Jesus' name. Amen. Then he said, it says that after that, that he took the cup after supper and blessed and they drank because... This is in remembrance of the blood that he shed for us. The Bible says that there is, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So in other words, there is no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. And it is that blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary's cross that day. Now granted, I know it was shed from the whipping post all the way through, even to the garments that they carried him to the tomb in, I'm sure. And I'm thankful that his life was completely given. And that's the picture that the Bible even says that the life of a body is in the blood. And so without his blood being shed completely for us, then the life would have not gone out of him. And if his life would not have gone out, we would not have a sacrifice worthy of God's acceptance. But we do. And I'm thankful today that we can rejoice in the fact that Christ shed his blood for us. Let's pray. Father, as we get ready to take this, we thank you so much, God. I'm mindful even of people watching online that I honestly believe that whether it's a, a, a cup of water, a, a Sprite if you have to, whatever it might be, it is not in the anatomic, the, the, well, the makeup, we'll just put it that way, of the, the, the liquid. It, that part was taken care of by you, your blood, the sinless, spotless blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as we take this, and, and if someone at home wants to, Father, if you, you lead them to, to, to grab a piece of bread, a cracker, or a, 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 some kind of juice or something, they can join us in that. Most important thing, Father, we, 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 we praise you for is the fact that together in like faith we remember the shed blood of Christ today and thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Amen. We're going to stand up again and sing together. Um, this will be a newer song that you will be hearing over the next few weeks and, and for Easter and stuff like that. So if you've never heard it, if you don't know the words that are at all, just um, just look at the words, resonate on them, pray during this time, however you want, you want to worship. So let's stand again.
Pastor Greg comes, you may be seated. Wow, wow. So, uh, challenging day today. Uh, I have 20 minutes. Um, wish to take care of uh, this. Nah. Um, I, I want to uh, invite you, if you have your Bibles with you or a device, however you may uh, read it, if you get it out, if you'll go to the book of Romans, first chapter. Book of Romans, first chapter. Have something um, really <clears throat> pretty. Um, I guess narrowed down to a just something one thing I want to get across to you today. In Romans chapter one, um, I want to read um, verses one through thirteen. Really want to kind of settle in in just a few verses there toward the end of that reading, and and as we do. Uh, we're having this together service today. This is an uh, opportunity for us uh, to be all together at one time. And I know, I know we got some folks that were unable to be here. I, I know some folks even had uh, no heat, water froze up, those things happen. Um, and if you endured some of that this morning and you still made it, God bless you for persevering through. Um, you know, I, I'll put in a special request to God and see if we can not let this happen again. I don't know if he'll answer that or not, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. Um, uh, I, I am one. I made a mention, made a comment, you know, um, maybe we just need to, we need to move on south of the border um, if this cold continues. Um, but just a thought. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. I'm not built for it. Um, uh, I have a dear friend, Frank Stanley. He would tell you different. He said, you, you have more layers of blubber than I do. And so you, God must have intended for you to be in the cold weather. But in Romans chapter 1, Paul uh, begins the address to probably the greatest theological work in the Bible. And in verse 1 he says, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son Jesus, Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, that through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are, all, are the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by some means now at the last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. Father, this morning, as we open your word and break the bread of life, your word, the true bread of life. Would you speak to us today? We live in a world today that is so driven in so many directions. There are folks in this room that, like there are throughout this whole world, there are those of us in this room that are, we don't know which way to turn sometimes. We've been sold a lie, God. And the sad thing is, we're the ones that help come up with the lie. 
we've been told that if we chase these particular things, check these boxes, and get all of these things lined up, that life will have purpose and have meaning. The problem is that we come up with that plan. And men devising a plan is really futile. To think that the purpose of our lives is to achieve a certain amount of money in a bank, a certain status in a community, a certain type of family, a certain type of house, a certain type of vehicle, a certain type of whatever, career, and that that is the, the, the drive uh, the, the end goal that that's what it's all about would you please show us the truth of what life really is about in Christ's name amen Paul um, here speaks uh, in, in kind of an introductory way in this letter to the Romans and um, you know and and Something that grabs me, uh, you know, uh, right off the bat when I was reading through in our, our D group study and journaling and stuff, I, 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 he, he makes great exultation that he, you know, he thanks God for all of the, uh, the opportunities that he's had. He, he praises Christ. He's thankful for them. He gets over into verse 8 and he says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that... Your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Um, that, that there is this, this initial uh, feeling of uh, kinship, but also pride. Uh, Paul had a lot to do with the fact that this testimony is going out. And he's, he's like, it's, it's awesome to know that, that this faith of yours is being spoken of so highly throughout the known world at that time, throughout that region and we know that it went further than that. I don't know if the Apostle Paul had an idea just how far it would go. <clears throat> it reached all the way to Winsboro, South Carolina in 1999. That gospel did. Got a hold of me. Changed my life. And wherever God found you, that faith that is spoken of so well, it made it to wherever you were. And it makes it everywhere in this world today. No matter what village it is, no matter what city it is, no matter whether it's communist or, 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 or um, a capitalist system or whatever it might be, if the gospel of God makes it into the ears of, of a person by the grace of God, then that person has the opportunity to come to faith in Christ because of the power of the gospel. Paul would say even after in just a few verses that he's not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. And Paul gives this, uh, this, this big exclamation point that he said, I'm thankful that I hear of the testimony. And see, there's a difference between somebody that professes one moment that they know Christ as Savior and then lives a life that's totally contrary versus somebody who God has arrested their heart, He has changed them, He has birthed them into the kingdom of God. Their life is now different, and now throughout their life, their whole goal is to glorify Him. Their whole life's goal is to glorify God. They've sold out because they've been bought out. That God has, has rendered our lives totally subjected to Him. That it's not us now moving upon Him. It is Him moving upon us. And as He moves upon us, as I was sharing with somebody, I said, if you look at a chair, that chair cannot move on its own. And I, and I said, but I, I said, well, I, I, saw, I, said, I said, that chair, can it move? And he said, no. I said, yeah, it can. And I kicked it. I said, God does the same thing with us. He moves upon us for his glory. Paul says, I'm overjoyed to thank God through Jesus Christ, and that is where the change comes from. For you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout all the world, throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit and the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Paul's heart is very burdened for the people of God. 
He has an extreme heart for the lost. When you study Romans out, you'll, you find when you get over to chapter 9 through chapter 11, you find out that the Apostle Paul is so desirous of people to come to faith in Christ. He says, I wish that if it's possible, God, that I would be damned. I would be accursed if somebody else could go to heaven. That, that's a stout statement. Did you know that? He's saying, I would go to hell if, for them if I could go and you would let somebody take my place. I don't know that I'm at that point. But Paul's heart is so evangelistic. And it's amazing because Paul preaches and writes the, about the sovereignty of God and the determining will of God moving upon men, but yet he's so passionate about evangelism that he is begging and pleading throughout the whole world that men would come to faith in Christ, knowing that it takes the gospel. Because even in the gospel, uh, or even in Romans here, when he's preaching the gospel and he's telling them, he talks about the fact that it's impossible that they come unless they hear. They'll never hear unless somebody goes and tells them. And that's why we do what we do. If all we did was just meet together to have some meeting with, with, with some music and, and, and an oratory speech to encourage people, you can get that anywhere. Sometimes as cheap as $25. It's just a show. It's just a momentary engagement to stir you up for a little while. But God is not in the business of just stirring people up for a moment. God's in the business of changing lives. God's in the business of, of restoring and redeeming souls. And Paul prays for them earnestly. Verse 10, he says, making mention of, making requests if by some means now at the last I may, I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. You know, I was thinking yesterday about that statement. I had been thinking about it for a couple of weeks. It's kind of this, this, this scripture was on my heart for uh, one particular reason that you'll see in just a second. But, but I was thinking about that. He, he said, if there's any way in the will of God, in other words, he could go. He could try to make his way there. But he would have to wait for to be in the will of God. He'd have to wait for God's timing, God's permission, if God would actually let him go. And it struck me. We take so much for granted. You know, I assume that I'm going to get to be with you every single week. But I don't know that. Have you ever thought about the fact that if I was not here one Sunday, that I hadn't abandoned the faith? What if just for that week, the will of God did not want me to be here, but wanted me to be somewhere else? That's contrary to the traditional thing because, hey, we pay you to be the preacher. You have, you're, you're supposed to be here. You know, let me ask you this question. How many of y'all think it's the will of God for y'all to take a vacation every once in a while? No. What if the will of God one week said on Wednesday and impressed upon my heart, I want you to go up to the Cleveland County Rescue Mission. I don't want you to be at Chestnut Ridge this Sunday. Are we mature enough as the children of God to accept the will of God when the will of God goes contrary to what we want it to be? I had a plan for my life. I did. I mean, I, I, <clears throat> I had a plan for my life. And, and, and when God started changing it, I'm like, in my mind, no problem. I still have resources, God. I'll just come up with another plan. And he stopped that plan. I'll, I'll come up with another one. And he stopped that plan. You know, I, I was on vacation one time at a campground in Marion, North Carolina with my family. The girls were a lot smaller then. And <clears throat> we were sitting at the, uh, the swimming pool in, in the little lounge chairs, you know, and the kids are swimming. And I'm sitting there reading a book. Uh, by David Platt by the name of Radical. I think probably will go down as probably the best thing he's done for the kingdom of God at this moment. But I'm reading this book and it's talking about the will of God. 
do you want the will of God for your family? How many of you would say you want the will of God for your family? I do. It sounds reasonable, right? Because God would never want my family to get in any kind of problems, right? And I'm sitting there, yes, I want the will of God for my family. And then he says something like this in the book. He said, what if it is the will of God for your child to go off into a third world country and die early, at an early age at the hands of militants for the glory of God? I took the book and I threw it across the swimming pool. <clears throat> Christy, she didn't know what was going on. I said, I don't like that book no more. <laughs> like, for me to read a book all the way through in one setting, you got to get me. You better get me in the first 20 pages because I can show you books with bookmarks in them at 20, 30, 50 pages. Never pick them back up. But there are some I've read multiple times. But think about that for a minute. Now do you want the will of God? Last night, uh, I was just trying to, I was just kind of got away, come to the church and sit in my study for just a little bit. And I'm just reading over some things, listening to some music, praying, just thinking about some things. And I'm re reading over, thinking about that verse. I've got a dear friend of mine in the ministry. His wife's uh, mom is on her deathbed up in Forest City. I'm sitting here, it's about 10, I don't know, where's Christy at? About 10, 10.30, 10 something like that. And I'm going, God, I, I really want to go see them, so, so if there's any way possible sometime this week, because I was thinking about the will of God, I'm like, would, are you gonna, will you open a door for me to go see them? Have you, ever, have you ever actually engaged God, or do you just pick what you want to do every day throughout the day? And you just do your own thing. Or do you let God decide? And some folks go, uh, God don't talk to me. I'd have to ask you a question, do you know him? Because if you're born again, the spirit of God lives in you. And I've never heard God speak audibly to me, but I've never misunderstood anything he's ever told me. If that makes any sense. And if he does not engage you and you kind of do what you want to do and you get away with it, could I submit to you today that it is extremely doubtful? As a matter of fact, it is contrary to the Bible to, for you to think that you're going to heaven. Church membership won't get you there. Teaching Sunday school 50 years won't get you there. Having a grave plot out there won't get you there. Giving money to the church won't get you there. There's plenty of pagans that give money to God's work. And they're going to die and go to hell. Pharaoh was one of them. He schooled Moses at the hand of God's so sovereign will. And yet he entered hell for eternity. At the bottom of the Red Sea. Thinking he was doing what he wanted to do. All the while God is using him for his glory. As a vessel of wrath. Romans chapter 9. So I'm sitting there thinking about it. God, would you give me the opportunity? And this is, he's like, well, go now. I'm like, dude, it's 1030 at night. So I called Christy up and I said, hey, I said, I'm going to ride to Four City. She's used to this kind of stuff. I'm kind of pausing there for a minute, you know, because you know why, right? Come on, tell me why somebody yeah well that's that's good but but she yeah did she did i want her to go and i know her good enough to be like god ain't told me nothing about going no no forest city i can promise you that so i gave her you know six and a half seconds to consult with god about it she's like well be careful <laughs> i'm like i'm like Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> I ride up there, and I, you know, I, I get kind of close. I'm passing the Caroline uh, Bridge, and I said, uh, uh, I called Frank, and I said, I said, y'all staying, you know, up around the clock up there right now? Yeah. Um, I actually just rode over to Daddy's house, and I'm like, 
I had called him earlier and he just before and he some some people were leaving and he said I'll call you right back I said dude you were supposed to call me right back I was like I'm in four city well it won't take me 10 minutes to get over there so we, we met up up there <laughs> and he said you know we get in he, he said thank you for coming I said don't 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 thank me I said because I wasn't coming up here I said but God by his will wanted me to come up here Paul has a desire to be with them he's checking it by the will of God and then he says this for I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established that is that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith both of you and of me there's something about when God's people get together now I don't know how what your relationship everybody's relationship I know a few folks and all uh, I know some of what your relationship is but I don't know what your relationship is with the Lord but most importantly even beyond that with the Lord's people some folks have nothing but derogatory things to say about God's people well I'm not going to church because all they ever do is ask for money I'll lay a challenge on anybody that thinks that you come for six months to Chestnut Ridge and see how often you hear about money it's a miracle what happens around here that doesn't mean you won't ever hear anything about money but it's a miracle what happens around here there's a little box sitting out there we don't play a song no more. We don't pass a plate to, you know, so you don't get the shame dish coming by, you know. Um, but you, you don't have to make God's people do what God tells them to do. You just teach them. And they're either going to be obedient or they're going to be disobedient. And God can take obedience and multiply it for His glory as much as He wants to. But I don't know where you're at with those things. I don't know where you're at in the, the scope of things. But for me, this is a precious thing for me. I'm not here with the Rotary Club. I'm not here with some car show. I, I'm not here for some scholastic awards. I'm not here... For, for, for handing out trophies, for participation in some softball game. I'm not here to give out pencils for getting straight A's in first grade. I, I'm not here for a city council meeting. I'm not here for a con congressional hearing. I, I'm, I'm here to be with God's people that, and be with Him. That's why I'm here. I'm not here to get, get my thrill all on, on some music thing, even though I thank God for the worship. I think worship is a part of the life of the believer, uh, and, and I, I, I love worship. I'm, I'm sitting this morning. I got my phone playing. I, my phone only rested for three hours last night that wasn't playing some type of worship or something and listening to some preaching and stuff like that. So I, I'm, I'm down for all that. But at the heart of it all, the worship would be nothing without you. The worship would be nothing without him. There's something that happens when his people get together. There's something that, that, that is in, intriguing when his people get together. First off, you know you're not alone. He says, I want to be with you. I want to worship with you. I want to get into the word with you. Why? Because we have something in common. What do we have in common? The Lord Jesus Christ period because Christ is everything from Genesis to Revelation it's Christ from lost to saved is Christ from Alpha to Omega is Christ it's Christ alone that's it that's that's what we have but when we have that we have everything that we could ever need right here right now and he says, I, I long for this to be with you. If by some way, have you ever thought of just how precious it is to be together by the will of God? 
You know, that through God's gracious gift, we get to enjoy each other's company. But not just to be hanging out together, but to fellowship in the fact that you and I, although this world and our faith, and this is, I'll close it down with this. So if our baptism candidates want to kind of get ready to go back there with Miss Debbie. Our faith is something that carries us through this life. And I don't know about you, but this life is filled with so many things, is it not? I mean, think about it. How many of you in the last 24 months, you have been through a, a, a just an onslaught of ups and downs? You know, heartaches and miseries, joys, rejoicing over one thing, crying over the next. Good decisions, bad decisions. Did you know that our, my faith does not change because of anything that happens on this earth? And this is one lesson that I would hope that I could get across to folks because there are so many charlatans out there that portray the idea of what faith is. That they're they're going to be, if you don't, if God doesn't heal you, you just didn't have enough faith. If your financial situation does not get what you feel to be better but gets worse, it's just because you don't have enough faith. I'll submit to you today that that is a lie straight from the devil himself. I, I got two grandmothers that are in heaven today. And I'd love for one of them charlatans to be able to sit down and talk with them and tell them two little old ladies they just didn't have enough faith and that's why they died of cancer or died of dementia. No, I know God worked in their life. I know that God listened to them through their lives and God answered many prayers of theirs. Now let me tell you what faith is. Faith is not our ability to dig down inside of us to, to, and muster up some supernatural strength to just uh, believe in something a little more. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. When you look up faith in the Bible... It, this is basically how it's defined from the Greek. It is what we believe about any particular thing. So in the Christian faith, it is what we believe about the truth of God's Word and Christ and the gospel in His Word. So if you want to increase your faith, you, did you know that you and I don't have within us the propensity to, to even believe in God without Him? I mean, we're going along as dead men. Ephesians chapter 2. We were dead in our trespasses and sin. We once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air that now works in the sons of disobedience. All by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God saved us. And it says in verses 8 through 10, By grace you are saved through faith. It is a gift of God. It is not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There's a whole lot of God doing the enacting upon us as the subjects. You see, my faith increases when I have more to believe about Him. If all you know is John 3.16, you're better than the majority of this world. But if that's all you ever know in the Christian faith, your faith is shallow. That's why we are so hard pressed around here to get people to study their Bibles. Preacher, I never, I ne I've been to church for 50 years, I didn't even know that was in there. It's amazing what happens when you read it, ain't it? Isn't that incredible? And your faith increases. Why? The more about him. It's just like a relationship with your spouse, right? The more you learn them, 
the more you know about them, the more intimate the relationship can become. That's why the relationship experts would just, one of the things that you need to do is you need to communicate. And that's what God's been doing since before all these relationship experts. Before the first divorce, God's going, communicate with me. Communicate with me. He said, if you'll communicate with me, I'll communicate with you, I promise. So, I just encourage you today. Pray, number one, that God would solidify you being a part of his kingdom, salvation, and that you would also be a part of a body of believers and that you would engage with him. Let your faith grow and learn to love each other in the faith. In other words, there's something great about having a church family. I don't know about y'all, but I, can y'all give an amen? It's great to be a part of a, a body of believers, the family of God. So with that being said, uh, I want to just pray for us at this moment. We're getting ready to start our, 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 this part of our service with the baptisms, and we'll close right after that uh, as we get done. But <clears throat> y'all just enjoy it. This, this that happens, uh, baptism is not what saves you. This is a testimony of what Jesus Christ does in our lives. We're buried in his death, but we are raised to newness of life in the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask our uh, folks to, to, to come on up. Sit that right there, if you would. And uh, if you feel encouraged to sing along with them, during this time, you're not going to hurt a thing. I trust in God, my Savior, the one. You want to come over here? I'll, I'll help you. You help them out. Hey, how are you? Are you going in with the shoes? or With that. Okay, well, you can slide them off right there. Come on right here. I trust in God. Just be easy as you're going over. There you go. Come on forward a little bit. And you can sit down right there.
Amen. Amen. Yeah. He's good, right? I just, yeah. So, um, uh, every, all, all souls are precious and equally important. But when you see somebody that you have had prayer requests turned in for, for years, and years, and God answered, and you've seen the struggles, and you see God win, don't you give up. Don't quit pushing. Don't quit pressing. You move forward. Keep moving forward with the power and the might of the Spirit of the living God. So, all that to say, um, it's been great to have been with you. Uh, don't, don't even want to leave, uh, but uh, that's on y'all. Um, let me say a couple of things. Number one, as we leave out, if you need some assistance getting to a vehicle and want to ride, just be patient. As a matter of fact, if you need to, stay in the warm for just a minute and, and I'll, we'll, it'll work out. Um, and I'm going to make an executive decision for just, just for a winter solstice for a moment. <laughs> so from now through the month of February, it's just the 1030 service during the cold winter weather. Um, so it, we're going to facilitate a few things. But just for, for the, from now to the last Sunday in February at this moment, so just consider, uh, and, and I'll, uh, so it's an adjustment for a, for a moment, but I don't think some of the folks will mind with the weather being chilly at times. Uh, and if you do, send me an email. Um, if you text me, I might not reply. <laughs> so, uh, and if I ever don't reply, uh, I'll get to it. There's people in here to testify, right? Amen. Yeah. So, uh, so anyhow, I'm going to close. It has been so fantastic. Uh, Y'all give them a hand for doing the extra duty. Um, our, uh, our security greeters and stuff like that out there in the freezing cold, please give them a hand. Yeah. And uh, so anyhow, um, again, a blessing. I'm going to close this in prayer. Father, as we get ready to dismiss... I can say that it has been good to have been in the house of the Lord today. I look forward to what your will for us has in the coming days. Even now, God, I know that you're moving upon people's lives. Even as testified already, God, of the fact that people want to be used. Well, we're going we're to call those into account this year. God did not save, you did not save us for us to sit down and do nothing. <clears throat> there is a lost and dying world out there. There are people out there that need, if nothing else, a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus. Help us get our head out of the proverbial American sand and look around and see that it ain't gonna be long for you to come and we've got work to do. We give you the glory in Jesus name, amen. God bless y'all, y'all have a good one. like online.